You receive a phone call to go out and work on an operation for DST. You will likely be excited and apprehensive. This section of the course will give you a little information about how to prepare for and what to take on the operation. You will also find a DRO recruitment document among the reference materials for this course, so you'll be able to refer back to how the recruitment is done. Before leaving for a DRO, you have a number of important things to attend to. You need to complete some initial travel-related tasks, gather all of the documentation you need to take, and pack for your deployment. Click on each image below to learn about these important first steps. Keep an eye out for an email to arrive from staffing with the information you need regarding arriving to an operation, and you should email dst at redcross.org to let DST at the dock know that you have been recruited and be sure to include your anticipated arrival time. You need to complete a required pre-assignment health questionnaire. Once you have agreed to deploy, someone from Staff Health will call you and you can usually complete the questionnaire over the phone. When someone in your region contacts you about deploying to a DRO, they will also talk to you about getting your mission card. The mission card is a debit card loaded with funds for your meals and other deployment related expenses. Be sure you read and understand the brochure outlining the use of a mission card. More information about the mission cards can be found in the DCS course Mission Cards Cardholder Overview. Now that you have your assignment email, you can call Carson Wagonley to make your travel arrangements. You need to gather all of the documentation that you will take with you. A key concern is identification. Click the items below to learn more details. You need a government issued ID and if you are deploying outside of your region, it should be a driver's license as well as your disaster responder ID with a photo. If you are going to rent a car through the Red Cross, you need a driver's license that is valid for at least 21 more days. You also need all of your travel documents, which include your itinerary, and make note of the DRO number to which you are assigned. Make sure you have DR-specific phone numbers and the 24-hour staffing number. You will receive emails and or automated phone calls from Disaster Responder Information System or DRIS until you check into the job. That information, updated twice each day, will give you the arrival instructions. If there is a problem, you can also call the 24-hour staffing phone number. We also recommend creating a packing list for yourself ahead of time. While weather and other circumstances can change from one DRO to another, it can still help to have reminders about items you don't want to forget while preparing quickly to leave for a multi-week volunteer assignment. You should also take your in-processing forms and a 3x3 carry-around information sheet that can be found at the Disaster Services Technology Group Share site in Volunteer Connection. Go to Files and then the DST Startup Toolkit. You can add the contact information you need to this document, print it, and then fold it up to place it in your wallet. That is a lot of documentation, especially if you include any other essential information you need to take with you. So it is important to manage those documents well. We recommend loading electronic copies of all of your documentation onto a flash drive and printing any hard copies you need before you leave. And here is a helpful tip. Obtain some plastic sheet protectors as they can hold and protect your important documentation. Of course, you need to pack your bags for the deployment. We'll focus first on essential items. Just drag each item from the bottom into the suitcase to hear more information. You should pack comfortable, modest, and easy-to-wash-and-wear items like t-shirts. 
If you have any polypropylene shirts, they can be washed in a bathroom sink. You will probably need to do laundry every 10 days. It is important to take the appropriate footwear. You must take closed-toed shoes. Otherwise, you will need to buy them after you arrive, or you will not be allowed to remain on the operation. If you take tennis shoes, pack a second pair in case they get wet. And if you're going to a wet climate, consider taking waterproof boots. Even if you're not going to a wet climate, always take a jacket or windbreaker or whatever you need to stay dry. It is also very important to pack any needed health and safety items. Click each tab on the right side for examples of health and safety items. You may want to also take a small first aid kit and possibly travel size toiletry items. Remember that three ounces or smaller may go in a carry-on bag. Let's look now at some non-essential items you may want to pack. A multi-purpose tool may come in handy, particularly for cutting the tie wrap to the DST toolkit. If you take one, though, it must go in checked luggage. You cannot carry a multi-purpose tool onto a flight. If you have lifting issues, you may want to take a back brace, and you might want to take work gloves to protect your hands. You might also take your personal cell phone and charger. Perhaps you would enjoy taking some chapter pins to trade with other Red Crossers. It is equally important to keep in mind what you should not take to a DRO. Not everyone on a DRO is trustworthy, and the Red Cross is not responsible for your personal items. So do not take a purse. Consider a fanny pack or other carrier that remains on your body instead. And leave valuables in your personal laptop at home. They may not be safe, even if you leave them in a hotel room or rental car. Now that you know what you should and should not take to a DRO, let's look at checked luggage versus a carry-on bag. You should always carry a bag onto a flight with items you will immediately need, even if you are checking a separate bag. Those items include medication, a change of clothing, your cell phone and a charger, bottled water, printed and electronic copies of important documents, a notepad and pen, and your driver's license. If it is possible to avoid checking a bag, it is best to do so, as it saves money and eliminates the risk of the airline losing your luggage. But you can certainly check a bag if needed. If you need to check a bag, keep it under 50 pounds, and keep it at 20 to 30 pounds if possible to make it easier to manage. Remember that the Red Cross reimburses for only one checked bag under 50 pounds and that you cannot use your mission card to pay for a checked bag. You instead need to take enough cash from your mission card at an ATM to cover baggage fees. Here are some final tips that may help you with packing for a DRO. Click on each image below to hear the tips. If you have made yourself available for assignment, Consider prepacking the items that you know you will need to take. Luggage with wheels can be a big help, as it makes it easier to transport your bags at the airport. Ziploc bags can help you pack additional items you may need to take. You can use them to take one load of laundry detergent and a dryer sheet, which can have you ready to do laundry, especially if you also bring some quarters for the washer and dryer. The giant Ziploc bags can hold dirty laundry or shampoo or other liquid items. 
You can also use a Ziploc bag or small plastic container to hold office supplies like pens, pencils, a steno pad, paper clips, a highlighter, a sharpie, and so forth. Finally, let's cover some things that will help you at the airport. If you are an experienced traveler, feel free to click through the next few slides quickly. Before you head to the airport, it is a good idea to visit the website of the Transportation and Security Administration, or TSA. It provides the latest regulations and hints for air travel, including luggage and carry-on sizes, weights and limits, prohibited items, tips for getting through security, and guidance for carry-on liquids. Remember 311. Three ounce bottles or less, one quart sized clear plastic Ziploc bag to hold the bottles, and one bag per passenger to be placed in the screening bin. Back on the home page, you may even want to install the MyTSA app on your smartphone to get easy access to information while you're traveling. Before entering a screening checkpoint, it helps to put the following items in your carry-on bag. Your cell phone, your wallet, and anything else from your pockets, and metal items, such as keys, loose coins, money clips, and metal hair accessories. You should be prepared to remove a coat or jacket during the screening process. And, unless you have TSA pre-check, be ready to remove your shoes and belt. And if you have toiletries in your carry-on bag, remove the clear plastic bag they are in and place it in the screening bin. And some final tips regarding the airport. If possible, check into your flight online before you leave home, which will save you some time at the airport. And take an empty water bottle through security and then fill it up at a water fountain. That will allow you to avoid paying for an overpriced bottle of water at an airport shop.